All right, hey golfers, uh, Drew Maholi with Second Swing Golf, and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Uh, we're down in Texas today. This is not our usual studio. We're down in Texas, joined by Mike Pulver, um, the GM of the Second Swing Dallas store. Mike, um, this is our second time down here, yep. but uh, I know you've been down here all year, getting the store ready, and then actually opening the store as well. Um, this has been exciting for us as a company to have the store down here in the area. I know it's been received really well, but um, I, I, as being down here today and also last time, I'm still getting used to people calling me and saying, y'all, that's, <laughs> okay. I still have to, and I think you've done it a couple of times, the team members have, and it always catches me off guard. Yep. Um, and so I appreciate the hospitality, but I think there's just a little, I have to come down here more often is what I'm saying, so I can get used to it. Yeah, it, it's definitely something to get used to. I mean, I came from the South, Southern California market, you know, six years ago, and it's something to get used to. Um, but it, it's a good transition, right? The hospitality is definitely there. The ma'am, the sir, the yeah. y'all, you get used to it. Your kids get used to it. Yeah. And it's just kind of part of everyday life that you don't even notice anymore. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so what I've been doing with new guests on okay. the podcast is a few rapid fire questions okay. just to kind of get things rolling. Let's do it. Um, so first one I got for you is you're playing, playing golf, let's say it's tonight or tomorrow. Your dream foursome. Three, three players to join you. Oh. Um, Tiger. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be Tiger. Um, I think uh, playing with just Spieth, just being a local oh, boy sure. would be. Yep. Uh, I'd like to play with Ricky Fowler. Okay. I think it'd be cool. Just young, come bright clothes and just do it right. <laughs> um, one more. I'm going to go with, man, I only get one more in my foursome. Yeah, who do you got? Yeah. That's the thing is, and it, and it can be past or present, you know, yeah. you can do whatever. Yeah. So that's, I mean, there's, what I'm there's, to that's think. the thing about this is there's not a wrong answer. So I, I know, but it's like, and be careful. Cause you know, the, the, the people are going to be judging this one very hard. I know. And I say that very sarcastically. Yeah. Very sarcastically. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go with, um, let's just put some, some fireworks in there. Okay. And go with um, good old lefty. Ooh. Mr. Lob lefty. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A little that Mickelson would be, action. I, that would be some fireworks. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. It would. It yeah. would be fun. Probably some side games going on yeah. as well. You know? Yeah. No, there's def definitely betting okay. going on for sure. Okay. So here's another one. Um, first of all, do you have an ace in your lifetime? No. A hole in one or an albatross. No. Okay. So no. if you go out and play tomorrow and you could, I mean, if there's one you prefer to have tomorrow in your round, which one? Oh, ace. An ace or albatross? Ace. ace? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I've heard, we've had a couple different answers now for that question. Yeah. Yeah. Ace. Here's my thing. I know my golf level and it's probably never going to get to an albatross, right? I mean, I have to smoke the ball and <laughs> smoke it again. It's that's not happening. An okay. ace is more likely. Okay. So going, yeah. Okay. Going with the more likely possibility. Yeah. And you know, as long as you play enough golf, I feel like the odds are probably in your favor at some point in life. If you play enough rounds, yeah, maybe, I guess I, I guess we'd have to do some research to find that out. Yeah. But, um, okay. This is always a fun one now. Uh, and it's sort of related to the last question that I have too. Okay. But, uh, so number three, this, the penultimate question, if you, win at Augusta, your champion's dinner menu? Oh, Lord. I'm, I love a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, I want a good filet, okay. potatoes, yep. maybe some lobster with it. I'm not a big lobster fan, but lobster, scallops, like I want a good like mix right there. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I mean, every time I ask somebody that question, I'm always, I, 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 I haven't disliked one of yeah. the responses so far. So. Uh, all okay. right, now this is more of a local to this area question. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of made this one unique to having you on the podcast, but um, your favorite Texas barbecue joint uh, around here? Tender. Yeah, okay. I think, yeah. cause we, I know we talked about that last time yeah. I was here and it was one you recommended. Yeah, Tender so. Smokehouse up in Salina. They have a couple other locations now, but yeah, by okay. far the best I've I mean, had. and there's, you can't really go wrong, I feel like, around here. You I mean, especially if for people like me that's not from here. No. Where I don't, I don't get to have right. 
like genuine Texas, Texas barbecue, barbecue all the time. Ever. Yeah. So yeah, we can be a little more picky now that I we suppose. live down here. Yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know, I mean, maybe a Juicy Lucy up in, in Minnesota, maybe okay. something that's our own thing, but you got Texas barbecue down here. So, um, well, good. So um, we want to get you on because um, we wanted to sort of discuss what Second Swing is and is growing to become yep. with these these stores that we've added. So we've obviously added Scottsdale last year. This year it's about Dallas um, and sort of the process of you know, opening the store, how it's been received, and then, you know, what you're aiming to provide golfers in the area. So I guess, you know, getting started, I mean, first of all, it's been, what, half a year now, probably, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, just Almost. under, yep, um, about five and a half months. Yeah, so five and a half months in, I mean, being received well? Um, are you getting into the swing of things here, if you will? Yeah, yeah, being received very well, you know, and I, I'm coming from outside this company, so I mean, I had to really learn Second Swing, learn the Second Swing way, learn our culture, our core values, yeah. um, and, and really help instill them in our team here, which has been fun. Um, I'm learning, but I'm also kind of breathing at the same point, right. uh, which has been really cool to see. But, you know, from everybody coming in that's still learning who we are, and, you know, uh, the excitement is still, oh my gosh, the store is way bigger than I thought it was going to be, even from the outside, you know, and they think mm -hmm. they're coming into more of a second hand type store. Right. And then they come in and they see it's big, bright, beautiful. I mean, it's been, you know, perceived and received very well, Yeah. Uh, which is awesome. There was a comment the other day, a dad walked through um, with his son. And as they came by me, he said, son, if, if heaven was a golf store, this would be it. And I was like, can you say that again? And he did, and we just kind of laughed about it. <laughs> like, what a good motto, right? Like, let's put that on a banner somewhere. Um, Cause it really is. I mean, we've had people kind of go in the door and just their jaws drop. It's been, you know, they're in awe of what we have to mm -hmm. offer here. And then when you actually give them that one minute tour and walk them around, I mean, they just don't even know what to say. They're like, well, I'm, I'm coming here for all right. my needs now. I mean, there's, there's something for everybody. If you need Absolutely. anything new with your your golf equipment, or maybe it's not even your equipment. Maybe it's, you need new golf shoes, you know, or yep. um, you need a, a club regripped. I mean, yep. here's the state of the art build shop. I mean, there's something for everybody in here. And I think that's the really cool part. And we, obviously, if you haven't yet seen it on YouTube, we did the store tour with Mike yep. um, earlier this year when the store was opened. Um, so I, I, in terms of the process of getting things open, and I mean, you don't have to reveal all the details, but sort of kind yeah. of walk us through the, the process of, you know, when you, Obviously, we're, you know, you got the the position of yep. the store manager, and then you sort of worked your way through, op you know, planning it all out, opening the store. I mean, I mean, ha that had to have been kind of a, a whirlwind process without obviously even having a customer yet. Yeah, yeah, no, it was right, and and not knowing this company at all. Again, yeah. I was training myself, and at the same point, I'm looking ahead, right? I'm forward thinking. To mm -hmm. I still have to build a team. I've got to train a team. We've got to get this open by a certain date. So as I'm training and learning myself, I'm, I'm forward thinking about all that and then working with, you know, up there at corporate, mm -hmm. you know, we're working with the team to, all right, how are we going to facilitate a mass hire? How are we going to get this done? Um, and then walking the store with the construction team, this is wrong, that's wrong. What do we need to fix before we open? Um, I was involved in, you know, some of that towards the end of the process, right? Beginning of the process, I wasn't, but towards the end, I was here. I was, you know, on the mm -hmm. grounds every day. So it was pretty cool. I mean, um, to see it go from a dusty, dirty concrete floor, right. really not a lot of walls in it to what we have now um, is, is crazy. And to see it happen so fast, um, that was truly remarkable. Yeah, because I have I remember for actually Scottsdale in, in particular, I, I, when that store was being built, I remember seeing the right when the construction started and what the inside of the building looked like. And I was I was kind of like, what is what is this going to turn yeah. into, you know, and then uh, Obviously, you go in there now, and it's a little bit like, I mean, you get yep. that wow kind of effect right when you walk in the store. Yeah. But I think, you know, and this happened for me several years ago when I started at the company, but it's like everybody here, no matter what role that person is fulfilling with the company, they're just a golf nerd. And yeah. that makes it an easy place to, to work. And then I think in turn, it provides an easier experience for someone that walks into the store or even shops online. It's like, nope. Anybody that helps you out or talks to you with a Second Swing logo on their shirt, uh, they're just passionate about helping you and they're passionate about the game. And so I imagine that also has just helped you build that team and build sort of your, your culture here as a, at the store. Yeah, and that was, that was fun when we did like, you know, when the mass hire, when you're hiring for this team, you know, to really put my take on it and my expectations when I'm hiring, like, hey, I, you know, I really was looking for outgoing, energetic, 
people to fill those roles because what I learned through Second Swing and the culture and the passion um, that we deliver, I wanted that for my team. So it was fun to kind of do the interviews and kind of yeah. pick and choose like, oh, I want you. You have a great personality. Bring that on board with us. And then even from that, you know, you talk about us all being all golf nerds. What's fun about this company is that, you know, I just hired somebody recently that knew nothing about golf. And now you talk to them and they're like, oh, yeah, I know what this shaft is. I know mm. what this is. I know what that. They had no clue, you know, three months ago. That was uh, so that was pretty me. fun. That was me when I started. I mean, I, I knew golf. I had played golf right. a lot, but I didn't. The equipment side of it was a little bit new to me. Um, now I know a lot more. Obviously, I'm not getting the going through the extensive fitter training that some of these fitters are doing. But right. um, there's just it is quickly how it, it, it's it's quick how you know the you pick things up yep. as you get involved with yep. it. But uh, so I kind of wanted to let's go through. I kind of want to get a, a, a favorite from you. So Kay. there's. I guess of the features in each second swing store, you have the demo bays, yep. you have tour van bays, which we're in the tour van right now. You have um, the basically the, the gigantic selection selection of clubs, the vault, all yep. that good stuff. Um, I guess of those, is there something? Is there a favorite you have that you like to show people to? Um, and then number two, is there maybe a, a, a favorite of the customer that you've noticed that a lot of customers just love this uh, at, about the store? Yeah, I mean, I could say I have two, and one of them relates back to the customer. But I think, you know, one of them being the personalization station, mm -hmm. it's one thing we offer at the Dallas store that we don't offer anywhere else. Um, we can logo print balls, um, so we can really put any picture, any branding, um, name, initials, whatever, in colors, too, on a ball. Uh, we now have, we can stitch the front of uh, golf bags. We can do towels. Uh, let's see, we can etch on divot tools and ball markers. So we offer, and, and then not only that, then we stamp clubs. So we can stamp wedges and color them in and do all fun stuff like that, as well as ball markers. So that little personalization area has been fun. Uh, a lot of customers don't know it yet, um, but when they do, they come back for more and more, right. especially the ball printing. Um, and then the second thing, which I think has been the biggest you know, takeaway from customers, is our putting green. You know, our putting yeah. green is truly a, a one-off design. It's really cool. We have putt view overhead, so we've got five holes that can show you your putt, your roll, um, the tempo of how fast you should be putting, uh, and then it shows the full undulation. So it's just a really cool feature to have. Um, kids love it. We have a fake sand trap out there that <laughs> kids are rolling in it. They bring little toy trucks and they're playing in it. So it's really just a cool feature to have in the store for you know golfers and families. Yeah, I think. I'm, as you know, if you're a, a nerd about um, your putting, there's all these tools in it. I mean, you have the putt view for yep. one, um, which the basically it's over overhead projector shows the break of yep. the, the putt. But then if you want to dive even further, you have well putt in the putting lab. Yep. Um, you can kind of work on the, the slope. Uh, and then of course you have Quintech in there yep. too. So you have all these, these tech, I mean, there's no excuse for you not to be absolutely dialed in absolutely. with your putter yep. between you know that the putting green out there with undulation, which is already a unique feature in itself, then to add on the putt view, add on the, the putting lab, the tour the van lab tech, in there. Yep. There's, I mean, a putter fitting here, you're getting access technology that you, I can't imagine is it, even comparable anywhere else. Yeah, it's tour level. I mean, mm -hmm. these are at specialized facilities for tour players, right? And we just put them in the store just for fun. <laughs> you know, in a sense, right? We yeah. want the experience. Now, they're getting tour level fittings. We might as well give them that experience. Um, and, and customers really come out wild when they when they go through that series of events in the putting lab, you know, when they get to see their ball roll, their loft, their lie. They don't even think about that, right? They just mm -hmm. thought a putter was, you know, toe hang or balanced right. or whatever, and it's not. Um, and they truly right. get a one-off experience. Well, I know Larry has been down here yep. um, a few times and he, will preach to anybody. If you're gonna get fit for a club, you gotta start with putter because you use it for Every hole. approximately 40% of your of your golf shots. So <laughs> why yeah. not have that one fit yep. for you? But uh, I know, uh, and I guess, how about, you know, I'll start with that, I'll, I'll go with that. Um, how about, how's working with Larry? Cause I know he, he kind of has his fingerprint on um, really every store in terms of his, obviously his amazing career yep. in golf, but also just the knowledge he has, club fitting, club design. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been, I, I know for me, it's been really cool to get to know him and, and interact with him and have him on some of our, yep. you know, some of our content, but I, it's, I got to imagine it's pretty cool to have him as part of sort of the fitting team here at Second Spring. Yeah, Larry, Larry was great. Um, him and another fitter named Tyler Fitzel was re were really great in helping us set up the store and then train the team. And then, you know, just Larry's knowledge of TrackMan, um, of Quintech, mm -hmm. of just getting things set up was huge. 
I mean, the putt lab itself with having um, the Quintec in there um, with the well putt, nobody's had it before. So getting those two to talk and then work with each other, Larry was integral, you know, of, mm. of getting that set up. Right, right. Yep. Um, so here's a here's a, a kind of a we're gonna switch gears here to sort of the demo bays because yep. um, that's another you know kind of piece that's unique to Second Swing stores now, where most other stores that you go to, other retail stores, they might have a couple of spots where you can go in and hit, mm -hmm. try a club. But you don't have seven, seven out there. Seven. Um, so and I guess. I imagine people love that. I mean, they can. I mean, you can walk in right now. You could take two, three clubs. Yep. Go into the demo bay. You have a track man sitting there waiting for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and you can. You have the monitor with all the data that you need. Uh, I mean, it's almost like going to the driving range, but instead of just your own club, you can test out anything that you yeah, want. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's what's huge here. I mean, we have seven, you know, center strike track man bays. You know, we have to. We don't have to move them over left, right, and we don't have to do that. We get yeah. to just set them and forget them in a sense. But yeah, the customers can come in. And now we're even letting them bring in their own clubs they want to. We have somebody, an on-call fitter, or we have a sales team member with them. So we're not so strict on saying you can't bring your own clubs in anymore. We're saying, hey, bring your clubs in, test the data against mm. our clubs. Right. The newer generation is probably going to outperform. And so we get them into that sale, and then we get that trade in from their old club just by doing that. Right. And then since we have seven here, we dedicated one, in a sense, to... Um, anybody that wants to come in and do social media. Mm -hmm. So we have a green screen up in there. We have some other technology in there that they can log into on an iPad and do some content if they want. So we're, we're trying to do some cool experiences at the store. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's ultimately what it's all about at the, is, is the experience. And um, you know, you, if you're looking for anything new for your equipment, it's new driver shaft, new fit. I mean, you wanna get fit for anything. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many different cool ways that you can Absolutely. get that experience here at Demo Fit, where you just, it's a walk-in fit essentially. Uh, obviously the tour van here yep. is fantastic. Um, and then of course, one thing too, I mean the vault area uh, at every store yep. is, but I, I have to give you kudos to how clean and like organized it looks in yep. there, where it's like, you know, that some, sometimes with that many clubs on a shelf like that, it can get, you know, clubs can get lost behind or what have you, but it's so, it's, you are really in a sense overwhelmed almost at first when you see how many golf clubs are in the store. I yeah. mean, there's gotta be close to fit like 15, 20,000 yep. here. There it's are. a lot of golf yeah. clubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's it's, a lot. It, it's pretty fun, you know, and, and you talk about, you know, the fitting experience of what we can do with the on-call, the tour level. And it's great because we can order new if they want, we can order custom new, but we have so many clubs in store that we can really take a use set if we need to, cut it, you know, lengthen it, bend it, whatever, you know, regrip it. Um, John in our build shop is very great. He's got a ton of shafts in there, even from pools and whatever, and he's a fitter himself. So it's easy for him to say, oh, you just need a shaft difference. Mm -hmm. Go in there, put it on, retip it, get a golfer in, even a shaft, which is, without going through a whole fitting. And so we just have all these different options that we can offer yeah. someone. So how about, so give me a kind of a reading on the community here in Texas in terms of um, like, I don't, my obviously up in Minnesota, it's people get crazy for golf in April and May mm -hmm. and in June. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you get September, October, November, it slows way down, winter hits and there's no golf for a few months. Yep. Um, it's obviously very different here where yeah. I think we talked a little bit before we started recording how you might get a couple of days where there's a store, like a, a ice storm or yep. something like that, you know, or even things might, might freeze over take a couple of days off at the course and all of a sudden you're right back open. So is there a season that you guys prepare for that's busier or is it more kind of throughout the year people are playing golf so we're always sort of ready for that? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, being new here, right? We're five and a half months into to this store being open. So we're really learning our seasonality with second swing being open. But I can tell you the golf season in general in Texas is typically the same across the nation in the sense that it's it's kind of the end of February, April timeframe into that July, August, and then it's really hot right then august yeah. september is really hot you know but people are still playing the diehards are still out there we don't really have a season where we shut down because of snow or anything we may get a little ice here and there in january february where course is down for a day or two or we may get some heavy rains or tornado come through and you're down for two or three days and then guess what you're back up mm -hmm. so you're back up you may be car path only because it's muddy out there but you <laughs> right. get those guys out there just gonna gonna play because they love golf yeah. and so our i mean our seasonality is kind of with the normal golf business but we won't be slow per se, right? Yeah. We're not really shut down. We're ongoing all the time. So our season is all year. And do you see, I know at up 
up in Minnesota, we are seeing you know, the weekends get busy. I imagine the same course, deal same here. Thing it's just, here. it's crazy on it's, a, a yep. Saturday, especially a Saturday where it might be raining or it might yep. be poor weather. You probably can't even move in there. Yeah. And what's great about that is you see the weekends, you know, and of course everyone's off on the weekend, so they come in, but seeing on Sunday, it's kind of a fun day to be on the sales floor because there's a lot of families in here. And you could tell they just came from church. Yeah. They just came from breakfast with the family. So it's great to see like the generations of kids come in, right? Um, which is really fun. And that's when you see the kids, you know, driving their trucks, like I was saying, and stuff like that in the sand <laughs> trap. And they know now when they come in with dad or mom that they can go and putt. We've cut down. We have a little section that we cut I down for kids' that. putters. Awesome. <laughs> um, we actually just took some clearance putters, cut them down. We just have them for kids um, to putt around on, and they love it. Uh, and yeah. if they buy them, they buy them. We cut down a couple more. Um, so it's been a great experience all around. Probably a great distraction tool, too, for maybe it, it, the, it definitely the, helps. the mother or father who really wants to get fit. Yes. They're all walking fit, but they have a, maybe a child with yep. them. <laughs> Put them on the putting green. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And then, so uh, another piece I wanted to ask about, too, um, in terms of the, the trade piece, like, is there a, maybe that's not the right way to put it, but like, what, is there, how do I put this? How often is there a purchase being made and then a trade on top of it, right? Like, because I think people sometimes forget that when you're upgrading, like, I mean, the easiest way to discount yourself essentially yeah. on that new new club is to just trade in what you're using before that. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, we are taking in trades and I think people just at first didn't know we were a big trade. They were still trying to go to our online, so they're calling the store and they're saying, can I bring trades there? Yeah, you bring them to our Dallas store right now, right? And mm -hmm. they're like, okay, we get people driving from two, three hours away from Louisiana to South Texas coming up here to do their trades now, which has been great. And I would say, you know, we're taking in 400, 600 trades a week right now. Wow. Um, so we're getting up there and we're, we're staying pretty consistent yeah. with it. Um, so we're staying busy. Percentage wise, I don't know, trading and buying at the same time, 40%, yeah. right? Um, sure. Which is get, eventually going to get better once everybody knows what we do and we yeah. offer the best trade value in the industry right. and everything else. Well, and that's how, it's also how the selection stays as 100%. huge as it is. Because right. Because you know, the, the trade in service is so, you know, it's industry leading. So yep. um, I want to, how about this now? So we talked about the build shop and yep. you talked about personalization. Um, is there like a, maybe a, a, a request or like something like a crazy request or a unique <laughs> request that you've seen come through the personalization stu station or even the build shop that you remember finally, like something specific, like maybe a crazy logo or oh, you number, don't know number about of the crazy golf balls. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah, some we, we, we put some kid We put some kid's mug shot on a ball <laughs> that uh, his buddies wanted to give it to yeah. him as a present. So we, we did a mug shot before. <laughs> That's good. We've had a lady, you know, you know, holding her little, you know, Pomeranian dog that she, you know, we get some requests like that. We do okay. nicknames all the time that are pretty silly and fun. Um, bachelor party ones are fun when oh, they come in, they want to like do balls for their or something friend. Like yeah, that. gag yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So it's fun, right? Nothing, nothing crazy, but, um, really fun stuff that we can do with it. Um, we've had a, we've had a guy come in for wedges, um, recently that he was running a tournament of something and needed like six wedges stamped with all this crazy stuff on it with colors. And our build shop guy was able to knock it out. Um, yeah. it's just, just one offs like that. But, uh, the, the, the personalization area is pretty fun. Right. Um, once you start working on it. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I was wondering because I, I, it's like you mentioned earlier, it's one of those, it's maybe somebody doesn't quite know about it right away. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, once you get over there and oh, yeah. if someone has, you know, some personality right to their, their golf game, they want to yep. show it, you can get really creative. Over oh, there. no, you can. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, cause it's, it's fun. There's a lot of stuff that yep. you can do. The ball markers and then we talked about the, yep. there's the, the yardage books and, and all that good stuff. Uh, so. I guess kind of starting to wrap up a little bit. Yeah. Um, is there, I guess, is there a, a, a vision or maybe the, a goal that you want the golfers in the area? Like when you, when they hear second swing, they hear about the store, maybe they hear it from a friend or they hear it from someone. What, I guess, what do you want them to know about the store, you know, before they even come in? Like, here's yeah. like, here's what they, I heard about second swing. My friend went there and had this experience. What do you want that experience to be and then to hear from? Them? Yeah, I think the I think the number one thing I want them to hear from just around is the customer, the customer experience, the mm -hmm. interaction, right? That we're we're best in class, world class customer service. I want them to know when they come in, they're gonna feel welcome, they're gonna be greeted at the front door by a starter, and then they're gonna be helped by a professional on the sales floor. So that's really the I think the main, main thing, if anyone talks about their to their foursome or whatever, is go see second swing. Hey, 
yes, they're going to say, go see their selection, right? Yeah. I mean, I think we know we have a pretty good selection, but I think, you know, for me in this area is go see them because they're customer service. Go see them because you're going to get help. You're going to get greeted. And then from there, check out their selection. Go yeah. see what they have to offer. Go talk to them about your trades and everything else. But, um, you know, we, we hired some, a pretty talented team here in Dallas. Um, you can tell by their energy and what they do and how they interact with the customers. Um, so, you know, I, I want to I keep riding on that, that, you know, people are coming in here because of us, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. clubs are second, but they're coming in because, you know, the culture that we've created here with the customer service. Right. I guess that's one thing I didn't even mention yet because like we, talk, we talked about all the, the actual things in the store. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, the, the bays, the tour van, the, the putting green and the putting lab and all the clubs. But, I mean, you go to our Google rating yep. and as a company, you know, they're number one rated golf store in the country. Yeah. And that doesn't happen on the surface because, I mean, a negative experience brings that down. It right? does. A negative customer experience. But yep. we have so few of those that that number is so high and we're the number one rated. Yeah, we, store, have, we so. have 317 Google reviews as of today at a 5.0. And we have had some, you know, that we've had to reach out to the customers oh, and yeah. say, hey, give us a second opportunity. Let me show you what we can do and how we failed you and what can we do to make it right. And that's, that's the end goal for me as a GM is, you know what, if, I, if I'm going to lose a customer, what, what can I do to gain their business back, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if we failed somewhere, let me fix it. Let's correct the issue so it doesn't happen again. Um, and that's a big win for me, right? If we go to a 4.9 or a 4.8 because of a Google score, that's, that's that detractor that I got to get back, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if I can win them back and get back to a 5.0, I'm, I'm ecstatic right. because that means more people are reading it. They see that we're willing to work with the customer and, and take care of any situation that might happen. Right. And that's that ultimately builds the trust that, you know, the golfer wants to be able to, like they're going to confidently tell their friends, tell their playing yep. partners about it if they have that Absolutely. positive experience. And clearly that's being built here with you and the team. And uh, it's been it's been fun to kind of watch this place kind of grow and get its feet wet a little bit Yep. Um, over the first five and a half months that you five said. And a half so, months. Um, you know, I hope we get back down here um, and we can, we can play some golf yeah. and we can go eat some Texas barbecue. Uh, but thank you for spending the time um, on a busy day and uh, joining the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. It'll be good. We'll, we'll, we'll do this again. We'll see how things are maybe uh, a little bit down the road for yeah. Second Swing to Dallas, Texas. But. Absolutely. You guys are always welcome back here to Texas. We'll get you all some good barbecue. Y'all, okay, you know? okay. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> I love it. Well, Mike, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, this, was, this was great. Yeah, no problem, Drew.